Hey there, this is Joey, back again with another marvelous video. With Angel Manuel Soto's Blue Beetle finally scheduled for an August release this year, we know we're extremely excited about the upcoming Blue Beetle movie. But before we delve deeper into this video, let's get our basics right. For those of you alien to the concept of the Blue Beetle and wondering who or what this thing is, it is a sentient alien scarab that latches to a body and voila, you have in front of you a DC superhero that's capable of giving tough competition to the Justice League. So far, several characters have taken the name Blue Beetle as seen in the comics, but only three have successfully made an impression. We have had Dan Garrett, Ted Kord, and Jaime Reyes, who have taken up the mantle of Blue Beetle. And for those of you wondering about Soto's upcoming superhero flick, yes, it is based on the character of Reyes. Well, this brings us to the main contents of today's video, where we will be exploring the origins of Kajida, the Blue Beetle Scarab, in detail. Now, before we get into our explanation, though, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Kajida. What is it and where it came from? Looking at the world that our favorite comic book characters reside in, a magical scarab does not seem that out of place. After all, the DC Universe is a vast space packed with gazillions of sentient lifeforms. Now, if we put further emphasis on these lifeforms, some of them are infused with technology that is way more advanced than that of humanity, and just by coming in contact with them, one can almost possess godlike powers. While we know you are aware of the Blue Beetle, ask yourself if you really know what the scarab is. Well, this video here will answer that and a lot more. The Scarab is a piece of technology, or a living weapon to be more precise, which has been genetically created by a race of alien conquerors known as the Reach and prearranged to obey their rules. The Reach is primarily known for taking over planets and crushing different civilizations in the process for the sole purpose of profit. With the Reach crossing paths with the Green Lantern Corps, it resulted in a dragged out battle between the two forces and led to the duo ultimately signing some kind of peace treaty. The truce had both parties recognize their territories and prohibited the Reach from taking over other worlds. But knowing the Reach, that certainly did not stop them, and they chose deniable methods of conquest, which, mind you, did not involve war, but at the same time had them conquer planets without anyone having the slightest clue about it. This is where the Scarabs come into the picture, and there are no points in guessing that they were of chief importance to the Reach's deniable methods of conquest. In fact, the Scarabs were part of an advanced hive mind, a series of biological weapons native to Space Sector 2. Now, the plan was to deploy a Scarab on a planet and then make use of the data received to assume control of the entire planet eventually. The Scarab would initially bond with the native inhabitant and then take over the mind and personality of the host with the programming of the Reach, thereby creating an infiltrator in the Reach's service. The Reach had a effectively taken over endless worlds by resorting to this clever strategy. Allow us to take you a little deeper, the Reach would leave a scarab on a targeted world, which would activate when the planet hit a particular technological milestone. This is when the scarab will select an individual and reprogram the host to make it serve the Reach. The reprogrammed host would weaken the planetary defenses and let the Reach serve their purpose, or, in simpler words, take over the masses of the targeted world without having them go to war. The Wielders of Kajida this brings us to Kajida, the Blue Beetle Scarab, which the Reach had intentionally left on Earth many years ago. Kajida came under the possession of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, Kaafra, who resorted to the powers of the Scarab to not only rule his empire, but also protect his people from all kinds of evil. To be honest, we don't have much information about him or how exactly he made use of the Scarab's powers. But when Kaafra passed away, the Scarab was buried along with the Egyptian pharaoh inside his tomb. Over the years that followed, many tried to lay their hands on the Scarab in the hopes of using it for their purposes, but each died a terrible death while trying to claim it. The Scarab remained untouched until archaeologist Dan Garrett, in modern times, chanced upon the tomb and dug it up. With him coming in touch with the Scarab, it bonded with him, giving him the name and the powers of the Blue Beetle. However, it did not take over his mind to transform him into a Reach Infiltrator. Instead, Garrett used the powers of the Scarab to battle many rogues. Garrett's career as the Blue Beetle had almost come to a halt when one of his students, Ted Kord, begged him to aid him in preventing the latter's uncle from taking over the world. Sadly, Garrett died in the resulting battle, and Kord came in possession of the Scarab. Kord wished to continue the legacy of Garrett, but somehow he could not make the Scarab work in his favor. Nonetheless, Kord took on the role of Blue Beetle and started battling Cry without the help of the Scarab's powers. When the multiversal catastrophe, or should we say crisis on infinite Earths, occurred, Kord came to a realization that the Scarab was capable of causing harm to the Shadow Demons. However, he lost the Scarab in the ensuing chaos. Of course, the Scarab was recovered later and brought back post the events of the Crisis on Infinite Earths, but the Scarab ended up reviving Garrett, who went batshit crazy looking for Kord. 
When Cord eventually came face to face with Garrett, the Scarab revealed to Cord that all the while it had been on the lookout for a new host, which undoubtedly was Cord. The Scarab even went to the extent of luring Cord by offering him access to its vast powers, but Cord declined its offer. At the end of the day, Cord successfully crushed the physical form of the Scarab and granted Garrett a final death. The Scarab was discovered much later by the teenager Jaime Reyes, who became the third and the new Blue Beetle, and had Reyes retain his independence along with free will. With the Scarab in due course developing its autonomy, and Reyes putting the powers of the Scarab to good use, the Reach saw the entire situation as a threat. The Reach was hell-bent on conquering Earth and wanted to wipe out Reyes and the Scarab before the duo combined could thwart their plans. With the Reach posing themselves as reputable galactic traitors to the general masses, Reyes and the Scarab were able to see through their maneuvers and prevent the Reach from conquering Earth. As for the Scarab, it had finally taken up the serial number, Kajida, that the Reach had designated to it as its name and emerged as a conscious being. Kajida and Reyes joined forces to put together a ploy to overthrow the Reach. Reyes intentionally let himself be apprehended by the Reach and in turn let the Scarab get the opportunity to hack into the database of the Reach to broadcast their plans of invasion worldwide. In short, the combined efforts of the duo led the Reach with no option but to forcibly depart from Earth. Interesting facts about Kajida, the Blue Beetle Scarab. When you have an armored and exceedingly technologically advanced suit transforming a teenager into a superhero, there's obviously more to this than meets the eye. To begin with, this alien super suit here is bio-organic in nature, and for those of you thinking that it is similar to Iron Man's suit, let us stop you right there. The answer is definitely no, because the bio-organic suit in concern literally fuses with Reyes' skin. Also, please know that it's a lot more than just a super suit, as it is literally seen communicating and eventually forming a rather genuine friendship with Reyes. While it is true that the Blue Beetle Scarab supplies Reyes with a multitude of weapons and gadgets at his disposal, truth be told, there's no limit to the Scarab's abilities. What's needed on the part of Reyes is to imagine a weapon, and the suit will generate it for him. But having said that, when it comes to the Green Lantern Corps, the Scarab does not stand a chance against them. How powerful is Kajida? We are literally at a loss of adjectives when it comes to defining the true powers of Kajida. We have touched upon the fact that it has the ability to destroy the Shadow Demons. Add to this the fact that it can absorb a blast of energy, one that is powerful enough to hospitalize a human being. Next, it is potent enough to open a portal to the Lair of Shazam, which is otherwise known as the Rock of Eternity. Then there's the power of flight, independent animation, and let's not forget the deadly pincer blades that can literally cut through metal. Kajida gave Garrett most of the powers that we have just mentioned whenever the latter addressed the Scarab by its serial code. As for Cord, he was smart enough to decode the programming of the Scarab. Speaking of Reyes, it gave him the ability to control nearly any form of technology. Interestingly, it could also mentally communicate with Reyes and help track anything biological, technological, or even mystical for that matter that's capable of generating energy. Call it crazy, but the Scarab was also capable of tracking anyone that Reyes met from a distance of 70 miles. The Scarab sight allowed him to scan anyone Reyes crossed paths with and even find someone invisible. Add to these superhuman strength, agility, durability, the power to manifest just parts of the armor and not the entire suit, the power of flight, a healing factor, the ability to shoot energy blasts, cocoons, shields, chains, as well as 3D holograms, and let's not disregard the energy bubbles. The Scarab History in Young Justice Animated Show the Scarab was sent to Earth by the insectoid species of alien conquerors known as the Reach about 4,000 years ago, with the sole purpose of taking a host, overriding him, and thereby aiding in the Reach's invasion of Earth. However, a faction of ancient Baalians, who were part of a mystic ritual, was able to cleanse the Scarab of Reach control. Many years later, the Scarab was discovered in a temple in Baalia by the archaeologist Dan Garrett. With the Scarab bonding with Garrett, he became a superhero assuming the name Blue Beetle. Post the death of Garrett, the Scarab was left to his chosen successor, Ted Cord. Cord, upon discovering that the Scarab was alien in origin, locked it away, but he nonetheless made up his mind to carry on the Blue Beetle legacy without resorting to the powers of the Scarab. It was the night Cord died in an explosion that the teenager Jaime Reyes, who was at that time passing through the parking lot of the Cord Industries, stumbled upon the Scarab, and no points for guessing that it eventually bonded with them. Marvelous verdict. Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. This was the origin story of Kajida, the Blue Beetle Scarab. We'd love to know your thoughts about it in the comment section. Also, how many of you are excited about the upcoming live-action Blue Beetle movie that stars Joel Maradona in the leading role? Let us know and stay tuned with us as we promise to come back with more exciting content.